starting your day off with a take on Vegas you won't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Holly Madison, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hi, this is William Shatner, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Why? Because I'm a good American. So is he. And if you don't listen to him, you need to pack up and leave this country. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Welcome all again! What's up? It's your buddy Sharpie Shapiro back at you. The Vegas Take on a Tuesday. So glad you could join us. A very busy news day. A lot to get to. We're going to have a lot of fun today. So there's a big lawsuit involving Bob Arum and Top Rank Boxing. And it involves sexual, alleged sexual assault. And the attorney that has taken the case is Gloria Allred. She's been all over the place. She's taken a bunch of high-profile cases this being another one of them, and she'll be joining us coming up at the bottom of the hour. So Gloria Allred will be joining us at the bottom of the hour. Talk a little bit about this case. Talk a little bit about Donald Trump because, of course, she's represented some women who have claimed sexual assault at the hands of the president. So we'll talk to her about that as well. Coming up in hour number two, this is going to be a lot of fun, right? I grew up watching this guy in 2003. I was 23 years old playing poker growing up. They call it the moneymaker effect. He won the World Series of Poker in 2003 on a $39 entry fee online. Goes to the World Series of Poker, wins the main event, world champion. Chris Moneymaker will be joining us, not just because the World Series of Poker is in full swing, but because he there's a good chance he'll be inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame. So we'll talk about that coming up in hour number two. Chris Moneymaker, probably my favorite name in poker, just the name itself, Moneymaker. You can't go wrong with that. So he'll be joining us in hour number two as well. Also, a reminder, Michael Avenatti will be joining us in studio tomorrow. And, yes, we will take phone calls, and we will have some very special guests uh, tomorrow as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun, a lot to get to today. Wait, wait, wait. Who, is, who is Michael Avenatti again? Uh, I heard he represented some some porn stars. That's that's what I've heard. That's the rumor. I don't uh, know if that's Ab- true. I think it's Avenatti. <laughs> Avenidi. Ron, you're, you're the man, the myth, the legend, and you don't even give me an opportunity to introduce you. Gonna, oh, sorry. How rude of you. I, I was, this, this, is, this is your moment. That was and extremely you don't, impolite. It's Ab- your moment. To yourself, Avenidi. Your moment, it's your moment, and you don't even give me the opportunity <laughs> to introduce you properly. That voice is none other than Ron Futrell, longtime TV broadcaster here in Las Vegas, longer than I've been alive, actually, not to call him old oh, or yeah, anything, no. but Ron has been doing this for a long time, and he joins us every Tuesday. Ron? You see how that nice introduction no, was? No, but see, it works well when you do <laughs> when you do a little back end of it, as I did tonight as, as a veteran. But anyway, that's fine. Hey, I have some breaking news for you tonight. If you want, What's that? if you What's want that? me to break a story here, I'm on my way here. Yes, my '96 Forerunner ticked over to 427 thousand miles on it. On my way here, tonight. really? On my way here tonight. So if Cliff Finley is listening and wants to sponsor the show, the, the Forerunner yes. that I bought from Cliff. 23 years ago, still running strong with 427,000 miles on it. Yeah, it's in the back. I got about, so. about 200,000 on my car. That but, is uh, quite so, yeah. the endorsement so for I wa- longevity for a vehicle. We need a, I, we need a sponsorship from Cliff. I, I, I want to share, share a quick story on the air. Usually I don't do this, but, um, you know, me and Ron, we've known each other forever, and we are on usually opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to politics, but we never take it personal. At least some, of us, some of us are right. Some of us are right as, and wrong. Yeah, some of us are wrong, too. And the other are wrong. Yeah, who would that some be? Us are on the but, right. But the me and Ron wrong. have okay. never taken it to the next <laughs> level where it got personal or, you know, we don't, we don't, we've never, right? Ron, am I? Am I not yet. <laughs> not I mean, yet. We still, let's reserve. <laughs> okay. There, there's some well, room I want to tell this story or... real quickly, and then we're going to get to the news <laughs> of the day. Uh there's somebody in this town that is a conservative talk show, so I'm not going to say their name out of respect to them. I've been a friend of this person for over a decade, right? We've gone to lunch together. I, I, you know, Earlier in my career, I asked this person for advice, so on and so forth. Um, haven't talked to this person in like a year. And I said to myself, you know what? We have Michael Avenatti coming on the show tomorrow. We'd like to have somebody that's way on the right to get into a debate with him. And by the way, we are going to have some people on. We already have one person booked. There'll be some surprises tomorrow. But so I asked this person, I said, would you like to come on and and debate Mike Lavinati? The response I get was, he's disgusting. And my response to that is, would you say the same thing about Donald Trump? Because if you're going to call Michael Avenatti, quote unquote, disgusting, I would say Donald Trump has done some disgusting things in his life too. I think that is a logical thing to say. It's nothing to do with politics, just has to do with personal, right? And then, you know, it, 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 I'm not going to say it gets ugly, but uh, I'm called a few names. I didn't call this person any names. And I get blocked on social media. And before I got blocked, uh, I'm told, you've gotten into political debates with me before online. And I'm kind of paraphrasing here. 
and you were an, an a-hole, you know, I was called that. And I said, well, I don't even know what this person's talking about. I mean, I've, I've only said nice things about this person. And then I'm blocked. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a second. And I'm not going to say who it is. I'll tell you off the air. But I'm thinking to myself, you're a talk show host. You talk politics every day. If you had a problem with me getting into a political debate with you on social media, all you had to do was say, hey, I don't want to get into a debate with you. Never called this person a name before or in my life. invite you on the show. Well, this mm-hmm. person's come on my show before when I did a show at another station. That's what's so frustrating about this. And I'm thinking to myself, Ron, and I bring this up for a reason because you and I have never gotten to that point, and we've gotten into heavy debates on and off the air. I'm thinking to myself, why do, first of all, why do people take it so personal, right, number one? And number two, someone that does a show in, uh, in this town and has for a long time who gets into political debates on the air all the time, why would that be such a problem to have a conversation with a friend and have a debate. Not everybody is going to agree with you. And you look, right and the left, some people don't like being questioned or getting into debates with others. Now, I love getting into debates with people, as you know. But with that being said, if somebody says something really what I consider ignorant, stupid, racist, not factual, then I enjoy calling people out on it. Which is basically 98% of what he hears. No, that's not true. That's that's not true. Okay. I can... I, Ron, have I ever called you a name? I don't think so. No. Yeah. We've got um, we've got into politi- about about thousands okay, of okay, political about a thousand here's here's, a, here's my advice from years yes. of, of 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 life, okay? And I'm going to uh, I know you don't like me going too scriptorian here, but I'm going to go with agree with thine adversary, okay? It's it's a New Testament scripture. Agree with thine adversary. And at times, okay, so in this case, in this case, here's the re- to me, here's the response. Okay, yes, he is disgusting. Would you still like to come on and be part of the show? Okay, I agree, agree and go, okay, maybe there are, there's disgusting things Listen, you could say about anybody. But agree. Here, I wouldn't have had a point. problem with it's that. It's very disarming. It's very disarming. I'm going to have a little tactic here. It's very disarming when you agree with your adversary because they don't know what to do. Okay. Look, if this person uh, came in studio and yes, said, Michael, is. I think you're disgusting you- because of blah, 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 I wouldn't have a problem with that. We all have our reasons, right? I think Donald Trump is disgusting, and I give reasons for it all the time. If you think Barack Obama was disgusting, okay, fine, let's hear it. Yeah, I wouldn't, Let's hear yeah, it. Yeah. I but, thought... But, yeah, you understand the point I'm trying to make. No, Just have a reason for doing agree, it, right? Agree. My, po- but, my, my right. point is some, occasionally agree with your adver- agree with thine adversary sometimes. It's, it disarms the, the That's not uh, my problem. The, uh, but, that's not my problem. This it, person called Michael disarm. Avenatti disgusting. I don't have a problem okay. with that. You know, if that's your opinion, you're entitled to that. He's disgusting. But why yes. would you block Answer me? Answer my question. Would you still like to come in and be yeah. part of the show? Why would you block me and then call me a name? It just it just makes it, I don't know. I was just a little surprised by that. There there are some people again. There are some people in this business, which it, it's amazing to me that you're in the communications field and you do a radio show and then you have a problem when somebody debates you or questions your opinion and has another opinion. I I, I don't understand it. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. I don't understand it. Here's somebody else I don't understand. By the way, Megan McCain. We all know her father is a war hero. Regardless if you didn't like his politics. But Meghan McCain is on The View every day. I don't know what she has ever accomplished in her life other than the daughter of John McCain. So she's diminishing what is going on at the border right now in regards to the children, right? People that are in uh, the kids that are in these cages, the 12 year olds. Quick question, Brian. Who has accomplished more, Meghan McCain or Donald Trump Jr.? That's a tough question. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I, I don't or think Hunter, they... let's put Hunter Biden in there too. He's accomplished a lot with Ukraine and China to make all that money off those two well, governments while his dad was uh, right after his dad. Yeah. So Hunter Hunter has done okay. real well for himself. Well, hasn't I, I, so, I, I don't I don't know how I can answer that question. But the reason why <laughs> I bring up I think they're they're they both have accomplished next to nothing. But uh, the Lucky Sperm Club, as Mike Lavinati would say. But uh, with that being said, Meghan McCain she goes on the View, and you know she starts talking about. Uh, the situation here at the border, okay? And uh, these kids, and now, now some people have said what these kids are going through at the border, through, you know, the Border Patrol, uh, they've, they've said that it's torture. These kids are being tortured. So Megan McCain says, my father couldn't lift me above his head as a child because of his torture wounds. Uh, she also uh, went on to say that, that commentators exercise caution when comparing the conditions at migrant detention centers to torture. Now, let me start by saying this. Ocasio-Cortez OCD. Com- comparing 
what is going on at the border to concentration camps is utterly ridiculous. And I, I we, we talked well, about that. It's offensive to okay. those to Jews who went through the uh, it is. for OCD it to is. say that. Megan McCain. Is that an acronym? Did I get uh, that it, wrong? It, it might be one of the one of the most highly politicized stretches in modern history. Oh, but just, it, Megan it's McCain horrible. does not know Megan what it is like to be idiot. tortured. Okay, her father, the late John McCain, did. She doesn't. Number one, and I and, and I agree with. Uh, what some people say, where she hasn't accomplished anything in her life. Now, the pro- here's my the big problem with this is she's diminishing what is going on at the border. Regardless of whether you think these kids are being tortured or not, when they don't have soap, when they don't have toothbrushes, when they don't have beds, when it's freezing cold temperatures in some of these detention centers, which is documented, these kids are getting sick, they're getting the flu. When you have 12-year-olds that are babysitting one- and two-year-olds, that is an issue, that is a problem. Now, whether you want to call it torture or not, fine, we could have that debate. The problem is something needs to be done here. Oh, a- a- you're, you're a build the wall something guy. Something needs you're to be build done. The, now, Brian, you're a build the wall guy? Well, before we talk, b- you hold the on. Wall? Before what, we what talk, stops this? you have to. What you, stops you, the you, children? You, you clearly have to build a center of some sort Brian's to house a, these to house these yes, kids. That's what, yes, that's what. Build the wall guy. I agree. What I'm talking about, Ron, has absolutely nothing right now to do with the wall. Oh, no, you're and right. And it has it everything to do with how do we make sure that these kids are but cared having, for properly in a humane let's, way. Let's, let's make it we so can they talk don't, about the, bo- the border wall. Let's make it so they don't have incentives for child traffickers to bring them here in the first but place. But that is another oh, issue. The Why big, can't you focus the, on this issue? That is the heart of the matter. No, I am talking about the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is let's Let me do ask a you way a question. to disincentivize okay, you what. the child traffickers okay. and occasionally some parents, what. but mainly child traffickers, from bringing these children here. Okay. If we cared about the children, that's what we would do, Democrat and Republican. We would disincentivize these child traffickers that bring the children here in the first place. That's the bottom line. That's how you stop it long term. That's how you stop it tomorrow. But but uh, you got two weeks now. Let's see what let's see what Democrats and Republicans do. Trump gave him two weeks. Okay, let me ask you a question. Two okay. different issues. On John, the, listen, so. Ron, yes. do you believe that these kids deserve soap? Do you believe these kids deserve beds? Do you think that they deserve to take showers and have toothbrushes? It's a yes or no question. We deserve, we deserve the best that we can possibly give them. There's, there's it's a 60, yes or no question. Yes, there's 60,000 people in L.A. County that are homeless that deserve some of those things, you too, that keep, are Americans. Okay. We can oh, no, talk no. about the homeless. <laughs> we can talk about the border wall. Americans. We could talk about Americans. how to make sure that illegals do not come into you know come into this country illegally. We could talk about all those issues. But I'm asking you to focus on this said, specific yeah, oh, yes, subject yes, without yes, bringing yes, up I'll something give that else. To you. Yes, okay. they deserve soap okay. and toothpaste. And so blah, blah, why blah, blah, is it blah. that so many of these facilities do not have that? Explain we don't, we don't, that to we don't have the money for seven billion people around the world to take care of their you toothpaste and so you, we don't have the money there for, are not to, excuse to me that's utterly ridiculous people. there's not seven billion kids oh. at the border that need soap that is ridiculous well, where are you the, getting that from the, what's the number what's the, what's it's the not number seven billion people? it's not one billion i don't know where you're getting that what from. number of people should we allow across our southern ten borders? and a half mil excuse me ten and a half million people in 2018 this isn't just kids this is everybody ten and a half million illegals in 2018 i don't well, know where you're getting we've seven been, billion we've been from that. but that's ridiculous we don't know that number nobody knows that number no Nobody, we yes, no, we do. No, you do not. That is a documented well, number. I'll, I'll tell you Nobody this. knows that number. The population of how the United many States is 330 million. So we can assume that it's between, well, probably between, I would say between 5 and 7 million. Seems accurate at this point. Well, the latest it's figures we have. It's definitely not a billion or correct. 7 billion. Yes, no, correct. No, but my point, my point, you get my point by saying 7 billion. That's the population of the world. What, at what point do we stop the southern border and the influx of people? Where do we stop it? People are You're coming changing over. changing the subject. Where, no, that, that is the heart of the matter. That is the subject. I've already agreed so with you. you don't yes, think, get them toothpaste and give them So you don't soap think it's a big deal? No, no. Not a big deal? I said, yes, give them toothpaste and soap and give them all the wood. Okay, what, so the stick to the subject. But let's stop them from We're coming t- here. Okay, that's by, a separate entity oh, that we can get into. that's the heart of the matter. Ron. Well, Brian, what, what's, what's being that's suggested the the here is basically a giant nursery. You want a Band-Aid, I want to fix it. So I don't if, think if, if you have a big building, if you have they have all these things, soap, toothpaste, uh, people watching them that, that are of age, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to have to have something holding that up. And it's actually a much better argument for the wall at that point. Because you're not just going to have a random barracks right next to the border for no reason. I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. The, the majority of illegals into this country are the ones that overstay their visas. They do not cross the border illegally. Which is a big deal. Overstaying your visa is a big deal. You have well, 180 days. Then why is it that illegal. the White House is not addressing that issue? Oh, that's who they want to deport. 
But why is it that I never hear report? They've got two in Nancy Pelosi. Why is it that I never hear Trump talk about that? He just did. He wants to deport them. He's going to get them out of the country within two weeks. He gave Nancy Pelosi two weeks to say, you guys fix this problem, Congress, because you should. He understands. He understands it's Congress's problem, but he can fix this problem. I hope in two weeks Trump sticks to what he says if Pelosi does not fix this problem at the southern border and start right. deporting the people that you talk about. And once he starts doing it, you'll be pissed well, let's at that, take, Brian. Let's once he starts deporting illegals, you will be angry okay, about well, that. Okay, well, you're making a gross assumption no, that's not you true. Will. Two weeks from now, we'll, no. we'll have this you're making discussion. A, you're, again, you're making a gross <laughs> assumption that's not that's not correct. Uh, I'll tell you what you gets me upset when these kid, the way these, some of these kids are being treated, okay? Two, five, let the me the give out the number. Let traffickers involved. Let me give out Mexico. Let me give out the number. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Again, 702 Two five seven five three nine six. If you want to be a part of the program, Ken, let's break at twenty four because I want to get back in the second segment a little bit earlier. Sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. Again, the number to call two five seven five three nine six. Let's start off with Gary. Gary, what's up? Hey, Gary. Hey, um, it's always a good show when Ron's there. Uh, I mean, it's always a good show. <laughs> oh, it's always a good show. But <laughs> thank you, Gary. Thank, thank you for you, the backhanded. Thank you, Gary. thank you for the backhanded compliment. I, I don't even know how you guys can be as civil as you are, but I, I just want to know. <laughs> How come I don't get a signed copy of your book that you didn't write yet? Everyone else has. Oh. Are you talking about Ron or, or Brian Shapiro? Who are you talking about? I'm talking about uh, you, Brian. Why don't you write your book called "Get Off My Show, You Moron"? No, I, I would say I would say I would say my book would be called "You're a Buffoon." That that's what I that "You're a Buffoon" by right. why you. Well, everyone else on the radio has a book, and if you hang on and, and they like you, they give maybe. You a yeah, copy. Like, uh, well, I'm thinking of a title. It would be "You Are a Right Wing Radical Buffoon." Uh, why you're a right wing radical buffoon uh, by Brian Shapiro? What do you think about that? I like his title. I, I like. JD, you like title. that? It's a good idea. You like that? Well, well, get to work, right. man. All right. I like. I like. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll I like I'll identifying it. morons, idiots, and buffoons <laughs> with Brian Shapiro. And it has a picture of you on a cover in the studio, yes. shouting on the phone at somebody. Red it'll face. be a picture of me. No, it'll be a picture of me in a speedo, yeah, Gary, because I know how much you want right, to look whatever. at that. Yes, I you know, fine. I'm not picky. Uh, what <laughs> Gary, listen, oh, listen, four, Gary. Here's what I want. I want you to call us tomorrow and give me a title. You got 24 hours to think about it. Okay, thank you for the call, Gary. Get, we, get off my show, it. you moron. That was the title he gave. I like that title. That's a good one. Two five seven five three nine. Six is number to call. Really, really uh, Let's go to Wilfrey. Wilfrey, what's up? Hey, Wilfrey. Well, I never quite know where to begin, but I would remind you about your disappointment. Those people who blocked you and called you names. The Brian, that's what shock radio does. You can't stop a vortex once you go dark on talk radio. So be prepared. You're just beginning to skim the service of what you're engaged in. Now, on the I'm, I'm totally confused with what you just said, but please go on. Go ahead. Well, Blocking begets are. blocking. Begets Maybe I'm blocking. just not smart enough to interpret what you just said. But that's okay. Well, Go yeah. ahead. Once you've seen shock, jock, dark radio where you, you humiliate people, there are people who there are dark sides to talk to hate radio. And, Brian, you can't do this every day and then go, well, what's your problem? I'm a nice guy. Well, just a second. You can't Wilfrey, what's your problem? I'm a really nice guy, Wilfrey. What's your problem? What's your I problem? I do like you. Actually, oh, well, thank you. I do like you. I Thanks appreciate that. Here. That means a lot yeah. to me. <laughs> I, I, show I, th- you more I think he's suggesting <laughs> that we are continuing down the twilight zone of radio ah, into, into a place okay. that we cannot come back from. So okay. don't complain about when, somebody blocking yeah. you when you cut people off on the radio. <laughs> yeah. so By the way, just because you disagree with someone's political beliefs doesn't mean it's shock jock radio. Just because you might call somebody an idiot because they say something stupid. Right. It's not. Hold right. on. Let me finish. Yeah. Hold on. Let me finish. That doesn't mean it's shock jock radio. We don't have naked people in studio, even though. I'd love to see Ron Futrell naked. He's not naked. Yeah, uh, not. That would be more along the lines of shock jock radio. Just because we do a political show and you don't agree with the way we do the show does not mean it's shock jock radio, Wilfrey, with all so, due respect. So are you saying that Howard Stern is shock jock radio, Brian? Absolutely, 100%. So so if I if I might on the border issue, right? Quickly, please. Uh, well, I don't know about the qu- I'm not a gabbing gun guy. But anyway, here, here's the point. Uh, I know a lot of fathers are in jail. Fathers who didn't deprive child support. Let me tell you what I do with those children. I got a good refrigeration truck loaded up, put some women in the back that are lactating, they're illegal, send those children to the border, and I drop them back where they belong. Our children have priorities, Brian. And the fact that you would use a child as a vehicle or means of dissemination so you can stimulate. Okay, that, that's, com- Wilfrey, that's, 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 now, I'll tell you what's unbelievable that you think I'm using these kids as a political pawn. Here's, no, I'm not. Here's somebody what, is. Here's what, somebody that, is, here's what Brian. that scenario reminds me. You ever seen the movie Mad Max? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That scenario just reminded me of that. Wilfrey, that was yeah, one of your that's craziest just, calls. That's you just had some beyond, crazy calls. That was beyond Masta, bizarre. Let's, let's, stay, let's, <laughs> oh let's, try to, let's try to get one more, squeeze one more call in before break. But, let's go to Jack. Jack, what's up? Hey, guys. Um, hey, Jack. 
I, I just had a comment. Um, I guess I'm surprised that you're surprised people find uh, Avenatti a, a scumbag. Did I say I was surprised? Well, no, I just interpreted. Okay. Uh, I'm not surprised. You know why, Jack? Because people are biased. That's why. Michael Avenatti well, has I not been... Uh, convicted of a crime. So, of course, he's gone after Donald Trump for over a decade. Of course, there's going to be well, people you know, on the right that are going to think he's disgusting. It, I'm not surprised at all. It's really interesting. We have all these different high-profile conservative talk show hosts who go after Avenatti, but when asked to actually debate him, they don't They do not do it. Tucker did. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah Tucker did. Jack, and I, I'm a conservative. Jack, yeah. I'm sorry to uh, cut you off, my friend, but I'm up against a hard break. You're welcome to call back, my friend. I apologize. Uh, again, the number to call, 257-5396. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, this is going to be a lot of fun. Gloria Allred's going to be joining us. Uh, very high-profile attorney, and we got a big case involving Bob Arum from Top Rank Boxing. We'll get to that. Crazy story when we get back right here on The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K-Dawn.